Hey, what is going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. In this tutorial, we're gonna create this sort of intro HUD thingy like this. And I thought it was pretty cool, so I was just gonna make a cool little HUD intro, but I was playing with the optics uh, compensation effect. And, you know, I thought it was really cool to kind of, you know, mess around with this and have a cool, you know, sci-fi uh, HUD, uh, I guess, intro. So. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to do that, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Alright, so I've already added my background with a gradient ramp, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the polygon tool, and we're going to just draw out a uh, polygon sort of like this. Right now, we only have five sides, and I want to make this a six-sided uh, hexagon, so what we'll do is go open up the Polystar 1, go to Polystar Path 1, and we'll set the number of points to six. And this allows us to do a hexagon like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add and I'm going to add a repeater. And let's go ahead and open this up. And let's go to uh, the transform repeater one. And let's set the X position here to zero. And let's go to the Y. And let's bring this down to maybe right here. And one thing we need to do is we need to go into the transform for Polystar one. And let's go ahead and like rotate this uh, by like 90 degrees. So it's kind of like that. And let me go back to the transform for repeater one and we'll bring this back up kind of like this to where like they're touching each other like that. And so far, so good. So let's go and add another repeater to our uh, polygons here and our hexagons. And let's open a repeater two, go to the transform for re repeater two and let's go ahead and move the X position out a little bit and maybe increase the Y a little bit as well and just kind of match this up like kind of like a puzzle here you know you just got to kind of match this up and make sure they're all like overlapping each other so it looks clean all right and then when we're done with this let's go ahead and hit s on our keyboard for scale and let's just bring this down a little bit and maybe we'll position this up all the way like over here and maybe go like to the side here and then let's go back into our contents let's go into the repeaters and let's increase the number of copies so like it's going to cover up the entire screen like that and go into repeater two, increase the number of copies again. So now we have these polygons going across the screen, kind of looking cool. We kind of have like this, I don't know, future, this, the future is all in hexagon. So I, I guess that's what we have right now. So now that we have our hexagons here, uh, we don't really have to do much anything else with this. So let's just call these uh, hexagon uh, background. And maybe we can lower the opacity to like 50% or so. Just kind of have it blend in there. Pretty nice. And then let's go and cr actually start creating our uh, circle thingy or, you know, whatever it's called. <laughs> and let's go start with the ellipse tool. And let's enable the title safe so we can kind of see the center of our comp. And let's hold down uh, Command and Shift on a Mac or uh, Controller and Shift on a PC. And let's just draw out like a perfect circle like this. Let's make sure we have the fill disabled. And we'll have the stroke set to five. And let's go to the align tab over here and just make sure this is completely centered up and which it is. So that's good for us. And let's go into the ellipse here. And let's go ahead and title this outline one. And let's duplicate this layer, which is now gonna be outline two. And let's go into those contents. And let's make sure that we'll scale this down first. And let's go back and increase the stroke here. So it's kind of thick, maybe like that. And let's go ahead and do it again, duplicate one more time, go to the scale, and let's bring this down once more, and let's definitely lower the stroke a little bit. And it's just, just gonna be creating some design for us. All right, looking good. So once again, let's go ahead and duplicate our outline three, and let's scale this down again. And this time we'll call this one, I don't know, line thingy one. And I spelled thingy so wrong, but I'm gonna leave it like that. Um, <laughs> And let's go into the contents here and let's go and add a trim paths effect to this. And let's go increase the start by a little bit or actually all the way to like, we have like a nice little slither. Uh, let me go ahead and just zoom in here. It's kind of like that. And let's also go to the um, ellipse one. Let's go into the transform of ellipse one and let's, um, Increase or let's add a keyframe for rotation and let's move to the end of our composition, which will probably be about you know seven seconds maybe. And let's set the zero uh, x to one x. So now this will rotate around in a perfect circle, kind of like that. And it's gonna make this look good. And let, then let's go and duplicate ellipse one here. And let's go back into the rotation for the ellipse two. 
And let's offset this by just increasing the uh, second variable here for degrees, kind of make like a, you know, separate, imagine making three of these things and we'll uh, separate them evenly. And let's make sure to copy the um, rotation here. And then let's go to the first keyframe here and paste it into the rotation. So it'll automatically be offset. And then let's go and duplicate ellipse two and, you know, go back into there, go to the rotation and offset it and make sure to copy it and go back to the first keyframe and paste that in there. So now this will be looking pretty good for us. And let's go ahead and make all of our keyframes right here, maybe easy as keyframes, just so we can have some smooth animation. And then lastly, let's go ahead and duplicate our lines here and let's scale them back up to the top. Maybe put them like right there. So now this will kind of animate like this. If we want, maybe we can, uh, you know, offset the keyframes a little bit, you know, just kind of create some variation. So it's not 100% exact, even though it does look like it. But anyway, uh, right now we're looking pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our uh, sort of HUD elements here or whatever you want to call them. And we're going to go up to layer, pre-compose. And we'll call this one, I don't know, HUD thingy. And then let's go up to effect, generate, and we'll add a gradient ramp. And this is where we can start getting kind of creative with the colors a little bit, you know, kind of make this thing not 100% dull, maybe give it a little bit of life. I don't know if you guys want to do this, but kind of creating a nice little linear uh, ramp, kind of like this. And then let's go up to Effect, uh, Stylize, Glow. And we'll kind of add like, this nice little glow effect to it. Maybe what we can do is increase the glow radius by a little bit, maybe lower the threshold, and maybe increase the intensity by a touch. So now it's kind of like glowing at us. I think that looks pretty awesome. So let's go back into our HUD here and let's go and add a uh, new null object by going to layer, new null object. And let's select all of our layers here and let's parent it to the null object. And let's just scale this up so we can kind of fill the frame. Oop, it's a little too much. Maybe like by 120%, there we have it. So now let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer by going to layer, new adjustment layer. So, and let's go up to effect, distort, and let's add the optics compensation effect. And maybe we'll start it off like, uh, you know, increase the field of view like crazy. And let's click the reverse lens distortion. And let's continue to increase that. And as you can see, we can kind of just fly right through this. And it looks awesome. So it looks like really like a lot of fun. Like you want to jump through this. But anyway, let's keyframe that. And let's go to say maybe three seconds or something, two seconds. And let's just go and really decrease this effect. Maybe go right down to like 50 uh, value here. And let's just go roam over time maybe to go to five seconds. And let's just kind of continue to decrease this by a little bit. So we can have this uh, continual... Uh, animation and then let's go to say like seven seconds or six seconds here and let's just like jump right through it because um, I'll complete the loading screen or something like that so that was my thinking behind that so so far so good we kind of have this cool little animation here so really what we need to do is maybe come in here go to our text title tool and you know if you want to put a title no problem I'll just type my text Sunduck film and maybe I'll do like a little cool offset here maybe I'll make the film part part of my text you know maybe a black you know, just some cool, you know, I guess graphic design things you'd be thinking about. And let's go and center these up. And let's put it underneath our adjustment layer. And let's call our adjustment layer uh, optics. And what's cool about this, uh, like I don't have to do any keyframing or uh, any, uh, you know, 3D effects because now optics compensation is going to take everything and kind of make it look like it's in 3D space, even though we know it's not. It's just really distorting the image. But this was a really cool technique, and it's really why I did this tutorial, to kind of do this. But anyway, let's go and create our loading screen. And I'm not going to use shape layers this time. I'm actually going to use a solid. So I'm going to go and add, go up to layer, new, solid. And we'll call this one uh, loading bar. And let's grab the rounded rectangle tool, and let's just like draw out like a mask, kind of eh, maybe like that. And maybe we can, you know, move it over, put it like right there. Maybe we can... Center it up. There we have it. And let's go to Effect, Generate, Stroke. And let's put Paint Style on Transparent. And maybe we can increase the brush size to maybe like 4 or something. And we'll leave it at that. So, so far so good. And let's go and duplicate this layer by hitting Command-D on a Mac or Control-D on a PC. And I think I should have said that a little bit earlier in this video, but you know what? My apologies. Let's go ahead and delete the stroke. And let's go up to Effect, 
and we'll go to transition and we'll add a linear wipe, which is right here. And let's say we want this to start at maybe two seconds, maybe, I don't know. Uh, maybe we start like right here. And let's add the keyframe for transition completion and let's set this to 100%. And let's go to five seconds and let's set this to 0%. And maybe we can do like a little feather, you know. So this will kind of grow on like this. And maybe we can set this to negative 90 degrees for the angle wipe. So coming from left to right, that makes more sense to me. And maybe what we can do is go up to layer and click on solid settings. And maybe we can make this like blue or something. Or actually, you know what we'll do? Uh, we'll go back to our HUD here and let's just copy the glow and the gradient ramp. And let's just paste that onto there. And let's put our uh, the fill part of our loading bar underneath our stroke part of our loading bar. And you know things could be looking pretty good here. And make sure to put this underneath the optics uh, sort of adjustment layer here just so now it will fully blend in here. And let me turn back on our hexagon. And let's go and uh, lower the opacity for a hexagon background to like maybe 20%. And now I really think this is awesome. And if we have to, maybe we can increase the uh, field of view just a little bit on the adjustment layer. And this will kind of come on just like this. And maybe what we can do is also make air all these keyframes uh, easy as keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And for the last touches, let's make sure we enable motion blur uh, for for our animated layers. And let's go to the HUD thingy here and let's make sure turn motion blur as well. I don't know if I did any key, I don't, can't remember if I did any keyframing here, but so it's just it's always cool to make sure to turn on motion blur. Um, and then finally, since it's not really gonna add any motion blur so much to this part, or like sort of the uh, zooming effects, we're gonna kinda have to add that ourselves. So let's go back to our adjustment layer here and let's go to effect and we'll click on time and we'll add the CC force motion blur. And this will add a lot of time to your rendering. So uh, if you're, you know, if you don't want way too much motion blur, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe set this down to two blur samples, and that will kind of speed up the um, the rendering process. I mean, I think four might be more ideal, but of course you could just mess with it and see what you guys have. And after a quick render, this is what we have, and pretty much what I showed you guys in the intro. And I hope you guys took a few techniques away from this video. And if you guys did enjoy the video, please drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe for more tutorials just like this. And please be sure to hit me up with my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And guys, as always, thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you have a good day.